I'm Drew Tuma with ABC7 News, and right now I'm 1,600 feet above sea level atop Sutro Tower in San Francisco. Love it or hate it, Sutro Tower is an icon. There are 300 antennas up here, sending out signals for television, radio, wireless communications, and first responders. But in 1949, there was just one antenna for the brand new Channel 7, operating out of an old mansion way down there. Four, three, two, one, up on one, and cue music. Stand by for Super on two. Like two. And Super Two, cue narrator. These steps are what's left of the mansion on Mount Sutro, where KGO TV, Channel 7, was born. In 1948, ABC paid $125,000 for this six acre property and the house that used to be right here, directly underneath the spot where Sutro Tower is right now. The mansion was built by Adolf Sutro, the grandson of the city's pioneering mayor, also named Adolf Sutro. The original real estate contract said KGO had to leave the house standing. So the massive mansion itself was turned into a TV station. And what seems hard to imagine now is that these guys were just kind of making it up as they went along. Nobody knew anything about television except what we'd read in a few books. And so it was a, a novelty. That's the late Harry Jacobs, 40 years after he was named Channel 7's Director of Engineering. It was his job to put KGO on the air. You see, the tower consists of a lot of pieces of steel and a big foundation that we have to put in. And so the first thing that shows up for this whole project is a package about four feet long and about a foot square. It's the beacon light for the top of the tower. <laughs> that we need, you know. <laughs> the original tower was 508 feet tall. It took a year to finish it and transform the inside of the house into what, for the time, was a state-of-the-art TV station. The massive basement was filled with technical equipment. The announcer's booth was in the closet, the engineering office in a master bedroom, and this grainy picture shows the studio built in what was called the great room. So you wonder how we do it. Well, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, many times we wonder ourselves. Channel 7 finally signed on for the first time at 6.45 in the evening on May 5th, 1949. First, the station broadcast a dedication ceremony at Sutro Mansion. But the main event was right here, a live TV show in the Golden Gate Theater. Newspapers at the time called it a Hollywood-type premiere, featuring dancing, singing, and a roller skating act. And look what we found. It's a program from that night saying, it's here, KGO TV Channel 7, a new way to look at life. And the MC for that night was Gary Moore, a radio star. There were no local TV stars yet. All the local shows were done live. At first, KGO broadcast just five days a week. And when the crew had to break for lunch or dinner, the station went off the air. And every day you came to work, it was fun because something new was happening every day and you never knew what in the world was going to happen. Everything went on the air cold and nothing was rehearsed. One of the early celebrities to make a name for herself was Evangeline Baker, who some called the first lady of San Francisco radio and television. How well I remember the night when KGO television was dedicated and we looked into the future then with all kinds of wonderful plans about the things we were going to do. But those plans would take a while. 70 years ago, the mass production of TV sets was just starting. There were only two television stations in the Bay Area, KGO and KPIX, and only about 5,000 residents even had a television. So most could only watch it at a local bar or in the window of a furniture store. Those who did get a look saw a lot of variety shows featuring local acts with a heavy dose of cowboy bands like vaudeville headliner Dude Martin and the Roundup Gang or Cottonseed Clark who recited poetry he wrote himself. I always admired my Paul a lot, the things that he'd do, because everything he'd done was right and the words he spoke was true. But I'll tell you now, that Paul of mine was the bravest of the brave at the art of taking a straight razor and a giving yourself a shave.
The station's first cooking show featured Chef Cardini, the man credited with creating the Caesar salad. A toy store owner known as King Norman hosted a popular children's show, and the California Academy of Sciences offered up Animal of the Week. They are Mexican jumping beans. Notice these little fellows. You can see how some of them are more active than the others. Now, their movement is dependent upon the amount of heat that's present. Channel 7 did broadcast some ABC network programs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, called The Standard Hour, was produced in San Francisco, but most were from the East Coast. Former general manager Russ Coughlin explained why many of those shows were sports. It was a simple reason our major prime time performers were wrestlers and boxers and roller skating gladiators. Sports coverage was cheap in those days, and the fledgling ABC television network was poor. Of course, there were no satellites, microwave links, and transcontinental cables, so the network sports we got on the West Coast were on film, and they came in the mail a couple of days after the bout or the game was over. So Channel 7 started covering a lot of local sports live. Crews piled cameras and heavy cables into the station's one remote truck and headed out to Bay Area baseball and football stadiums. From professional games at the always muddy Keysar to any local college with the team, the television sports era was beginning with all the pageantry that went along. Happy Monday morning. One of the most successful early shows starred Jack LaLanne, an early fitness buff whose program was eventually syndicated across the country. LaLanne caused a sensation when he suited up for this Bay Area stunt. After 42 minutes, he finally surfaces. The one-time Mr. America thus becomes the first person in the world ever to swim the Golden Gate underwater. After several years on the air, Channel 7 was still broadcasting from the mansion a lot of staff called the Haunted House. Considered by some to be so spooky, it was used as the backdrop of a mystery movie. It was medieval with lots of stone walls and things. And inside, it was absolutely wonderful. There was sconces on the walls that held torches. It was really cool. But the massive mansion was too small to take the station into the future. Cut the ribbon here so that the workmen can now go in and start us all off. In a live TV special in 1953, the ABC Brass announced the network was renovating an old building on Golden Gate Avenue. That would be the new home for both KGO television and KGO radio. My life will never be the same. The grand plan took shape in about a year, and the station signed on a hugely popular radio DJ named Don Sherwood to start a program called San Francisco Tonight, a forerunner to late night talk shows. Sherwood even got his own orchestra. He was really a superstar. They never heard of that word in those days, but he really was. That was a cult show. It had a cult following. It, uh, it, it had ratings. I mean, people would uh, try to get a ticket, and they had to wait six months to get in to see that show. We were on the air live three hours, three and a half hours a night, five nights a week. Walt Disney's Disneyland. By the mid-50s, the ABC network was offering more high-quality programs, including this series that followed the building of Disneyland in the year leading up to its opening. This is the first episode with Walt Disney showing the empty lot where the park would be built and a scale model of the entrance that would represent the heartland of America. An old-fashioned Main Street, hometown USA, just after the turn of the century. A weekly show called Success Story was a Channel 7 staple in the 50s. There is drama, often romance and human interest in the saga of our great industrial plants. Crews traveled to Bay Area factories for elaborate productions promoting American ingenuity, like this early hovercraft created at the Hiller helicopter plant in Palo Alto. The sensational flying platform. Most of each success story show was shot live. In this program, the business being featured was Channel 7 itself, explaining what it took to get live television on the air from a remote location. $150,000 worth of television equipment Microphones, lights, electronic devices, immensely valuable cameras, and literally miles of heavy cable. But for all the mainstream offerings, there was also a sprinkling of the exotic. A program based on the universal language of music, it is our pleasure to present to you Corla Pandit. 
Corla had a lot of close-ups, but never spoke a word. Heading into the 60s, you might say the adolescent industry still lacked a certain dignity. But as the hair got bigger, at least some production got slicker. In 1964, Channel 7's Dick Stewart show was reported to be the highest budget program in local television. It featured guest celebrities and was one of the first Bay Area programs with an African-American woman as a regular, singer Barbara McNair. It's the most unusual day. But even as some shows strive to be hip, I keep grooving in my sleep at night. There was still a big audience for Hokey. A little more hair than a twist and a turn. Well, well what do you know? know? It's Tennessee Ernie. That's Tennessee Ernie Ford, a successful country singer who eventually moved to the Bay Area and hosted his national program from the Channel 7 studio. I on a hill. His sidekick was Jim Lang, a longtime San Francisco radio and TV personality. 745 shows we've already done. You got to be sick of us. <laughs> Good morning. This is the 1966 first episode of Channel 7's first morning talk show called AM with Jim Dunbar from KGO Radio and former Miss America Nancy Fleming. It was shot in black and white, but soon afterward, KGO became the first Bay Area station to broadcast local shows in color. One of the earliest was this production of Beauty and the Beast, performed by the San Francisco Ballet. But just in case you thought the station succumbed to highbrow culture, the wisecracking former stripper Gypsy Rose Lee, who did two stints at KGO, was ready to set you straight. All this time, Channel 7 was still sending out its signal from the old tower up on Mount Sutro. But the Bay Area was growing and needed a taller tower to reach the far out suburbs. The new modern Sutro Tower was finally finished in 1973 to be shared by most of the local television stations. The old mansion was declared a fire trap and torn down, but the crew did save this one stained glass window now on the wall at the Sutro Tower office. And as the new tower went up, another icon was riding into town with an extremely popular ad campaign. Van the Kid Amber. He's not afraid to smoke out his own news stories. Before the news gang showed up, local television news was still struggling to find an audience. But the arrival of the news gang launched the most successful news team in Bay Area history. News people who like people on News Scene, Channel 7. Tastes may have changed a little since then, but that Wild West beginning led to decades of top news coverage that's still helping to build a better Bay Area. I'm Drew Tuma, celebrating 70 great years of ABC7.